Sleeping heavily in bed, you soon started to have nightmares again. Before the nightmare ended, you sat up shaking a little more than afraid. Kirishima was beside you still asleep, feeling a little relieved that you were home. You sat at the edge of the bed, then you heard a knock at the door of your room. As the door opened, you seen your son, Ashima, walking over to you. Mom, are you okay? It's nothing, I just couldn't sleep. For being ten years old, your son was very alert and protective. He sat on the floor next to you, rested his head on your knee. You started to comb his long hair. It wasn't long ago, he was just a baby. Mom, how come you don't have a quirk? I just wasn't born with one like you and your dad. It's okay, Mom. I'll keep you safe. I know you will. Now get some sleep. We have school. When your son left the room, the door closed and Kirishima sat up. You didn't know he woke up from his face. He heard everything. Will you ever tell him you have a quirk? I can't carry and you know why. That was years ago. It wasn't your fault for letting them go. I couldn't let you die. That would have made me lose it. Being a wolf isn't easy. Soon you felt Kirishima sit behind you as he wrapped his arms around your waist. It's the past you left that life to be with me and we have our kid. You're right, I love him very much. So you had the nightmare again. Was it the same? No, this time it was worse. That's why I had my quirk and stay hidden. You had me, so don't worry. No one can get you. The both of you then went to bed and he held you. Everything felt okay. The next morning, Kirishima went to work on hero business. As usual, you took Mishima to school. As you walked back home, something was off. As you walked in your mansion, the person you seen sitting on the stairs was not who you expected. The blue flame still bothered your sense of smell that would have blood on it. Dobby, why are you here? Just to visit, still same hiding your cork. It's none of your business, just leave my home now. I just got here, plus I have information. As you walked to him, you fell back on the floor from the smell of the collar. He held it out to you as you looked away, trying to stay calm. The caller was from an old friend that was part of a group you were in. Dobby smiled at you, seeing you struggle to stay calm. Can't handle the smell. Get that away from me, Dobby. Before Dobby left, he dropped it on the floor next to you. Your canine fang slowly grew back before you lost yourself. You thought of your son. As you landed on the floor, you quickly dialed Kirishima's number. When he answered, you asked him to come home. When he hung up, you passed out, and the collar disappeared. Soon as Kirishima came home, he picked you up from where you lay on the floor. He held you in his arms. He knew that what happened, it was your quirk. From your nails, he could tell they were sharp like before, and the number nine was under your left eye. Hugging you close to him, he sat up on the stairs with you. He spoke almost sadly. You couldn't have kept it inside for so long. We knew this would happen one day. We can't hide this anymore. Not from Nashima. When Kirishima looked up, he seen Bakugo holding Nashima in his arms. He was asleep. Kirishima couldn't believe it was his friend that he had not seen in a while. Hey, Kiri, need any help? Please look forward to the next part, and I'll be updating it very soon. I hope you enjoyed.